In this video, I want to define an orthonormal set. As a reminder, orthogonal vectors are vectors whose dot product is equal to zero. And normalized vectors are vectors who have a length of one. So orthonormal vectors are vectors that are all of length one and have a dot product of zero. Let's think about these three vectors, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 0, negative 1. Let's call these vectors v1, v2, and v3. v1 dot v2, that's 0 times 1 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, and 0 times 1 is 0. So those are orthogonal. We look at v2 dot v3, 1 times 1 is 1, 0 times 0 is 0, and 1 times negative 1 is minus 1. Those are also orthogonal vectors. Finally, I need to check v1 dot v3. 0 times 1 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, and 0 times negative 1 is 0. So these are all orthogonal vectors. Let's look at the length. The first one, this would be the square root of 0 squared plus 1 squared plus 0 squared, which is 1. The length of v2, 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared, that has a length of square root of 2. And the length of v3, that's 1 squared plus 0 squared plus negative 1 squared which also has a length of square root of 2. So, while these are orthogonal vectors, they are not orthonormal vectors. However, we did discuss how to take a vector and make a vector of length 1. We divide by its length. So, my second vector, I'm going to divide by the length of v2. For my third vector, I'm going to divide by the length of v3. And when I do that, I now have a set of normalized vectors. They all have a length of 1. And you can double check that these new vectors are also orthogonal, but they will be. So I started with a set that was orthogonal and created an orthonormal set. And this is actually more than just an orthonormal set. In reality, it is an orthonormal basis. If we get a set of vectors that are all orthogonal, they're guaranteed to be linearly independent. So not only this is, is this an orthonormal set, it is an orthonormal basis of R3. If our basis is not orthogonal to begin with, we need to go through what's known as the Gram-Schmidt process. Let's suppose I have a set of vectors v1, v2, v3 through vn, and these do form a basis. And I want to form an orthogonal basis. The first step for this, I'm going to leave my first vector alone. The first vector is going to stay exactly the same way it was. The second vector is going to be formed by taking the second vector in my basis, v2, and doing v2 minus v2 dot u1 the previous vector, divided by the norm of u1 squared times u1. And we might recognize this term here as the orthogonal projection. For u3, I would take my third vector, v3, subtract v3 dot u2 over the length of u2 squared times u2, minus v3 dot u1 over the norm of u squared u1. So essentially, I'm going to take the next vector in the set, dot it with the previous vector that I found, divide by the norm of that previous vector, times that previous vector. Do this slowly with all of the previous vectors and subtract them. Let's consider these three vectors here. We're going to go ahead and call these v1, v2, v3. And I want to do Gram-Schmidt to get an orthogonal basis. Well, the first vector in my orthogonal basis is just going to be v1. 
the second one, u2 is going to be my second vector, minus, and then I'm going to take the dot product of my second vector with the previous vector. So 0 times 1 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. I need to divide that by the length of the previous vector squared, which actually turns out to be 3. So we have that the length of u1 squared is equal to 3. So that's where this 3 comes on in the bottom. Times u1. So this works out to be 0 minus 2 thirds, which is negative 2 thirds, 1 minus 2 thirds, 1 minus 2 thirds. So now I have the second vector in my orthogonal basis. Now let's look at u3. I take my third vector. And then I'm going to subtract. I'm going to start by dotting this with the previous vector. So 0 times negative 2 thirds, 0 times 1 third, 0 times 1 third, divided by the length of u2 squared, which actually works out to be 2 thirds. So we're going to divide by 2 thirds times u2, negative 2 thirds, 1 third, 1 third. We then subtract. This time I'm going to dot v3 with u1. 0 times 1 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, and 1 times 1 is 1, divided by the length of u1 squared, which is 3, times u1. And if we were to work this out, we would get 0 minus 1 half, 1 half. So now with these three vectors, I have an orthogonal basis. No, it is not an orthonormal basis yet, but we have now gotten our orthogonal ba basis. We do have orthogonal vectors. Now that I have my orthogonal basis, I can start to get my orthonormal basis. We can see that the length of the first one, the norm of the first one, is going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is the square root of 3. So that vector becomes 1 over the square root of 3, 1 over the square root of 3, 1 over the square root of 3. For the second one, negative 2 thirds squared plus 1 third squared plus 1 third squared. This works out to be the square root of 2 thirds. So my second one would be negative 2 over. 3 square root of 2 thirds, 1 over 3 times the square root of 2 thirds, and then once again 1 over 3 times the square root of 2 thirds. My last one, 0 squared plus minus 1 half squared plus 1 half squared. So this is 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. This would be the square root of 1 half. So my third vector, 0, negative 1 over 2 times the square root of 1 half, 1 over 2 times the square root of 1 half. And these can absolutely be simplified, but for now, we do have a very basic orthonormal basis.